to inaugurate our new guest artist series, where I work and discuss with known figures in the music world. I have decided to let the younger generation, with their new and innovative approach, speak first. Brett Young has made a formidable reputation for himself as part of the two-set violin team. Along with Eddie Chen, their highly amusing videos have become a phenomenon on social media networks with over 800 million views. Five million followers observe their often painfully true and funny exploits as classical musicians exposed to the real world. Despite their comedic talent, they remain first and foremost serious musicians. Brett began his studies in Queensland, Australia, and quickly became concertmaster of the Australian Youth Orchestra. An honors graduate at the Queensland Conservatorium in 2013, he was awarded the prestigious Brisbane Club Scholarship. Already in 2012, he had made his solo performing debut with the Tchaikovsky Concerto. Since then, he has worked as a violinist in the Sydney, Queensland and Melbourne Symphony Orchestras. He often performs as soloist in public venues, such as at the 2014 G20. Today, my friends, I will have the pleasure of hearing him play and exchanging on Isai's marvelous ballad. Brett. Oh, hello. <laughs> Maxim. Good evening, or what is it, with, where you are in That's Singapore? Afternoon. Afternoon. Yeah. It's so great to see you. I love your shirt. I'm so, Thank you. I'm sorry I'm way too standard, you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> too, too, bo too boring for you. I can read the notes. Oh. Uh, oh, great. Brett, it's a... True pleasure working with you. I've been watching all your clips and all your wonderful videos. Really fantastic with your partner. Thank you. Really, really, really fantastic. You. This is great pleasure. Yeah. And uh, your, also your violin skills are great. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> it's also a pleasure for me to, you know, hear with you. Um, I've looked up to your playing for the longest time. And that, you know what, what I admire that you can do without warm-up? You can play anything. This is great. This is the sign of professionalism. You know, uh, yeah. you know uh, people work because they need to. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're getting by. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is great. Yeah. And your observations especially, I think they're so deep and right into the uh, core of the subject. Mm. Funny, but also serious at the same time. You give so much information, so bless you. Really great. No, really, thanks to, you know, you inspiring me as well. Great value you add to young people and great inspirations. Thanks for you to, you know, to do this. This is fun. It's going to be great. No, thanks to you. It's such an honor to be... Ah, oh, come on. This is uh, very much relaxed, you know, so, you know, you just uh, play whatever you want. And uh, To be honest, it's been about it's a few years since I've performed. I don't, like, do you want to hear the whole Ezai third sonata? Amazing, yeah, that would be great. But, you know, I, I myself, I lay sometimes pieces down uh, not to be bored with them if I play them too much. For instance, Mendelssohn Concerto, believe it or not, I haven't played for uh, 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and only last year, yeah, you will not believe it, and only last year I took it again and I played it for the first time in uh, Guadalajara in Mexico and uh, it felt like it was newly composed and I was doing a world premiere. It felt so awesome. So, and now wow. everyone is asking, you know, I was just playing with uh, Maggio Fiorentino, with Zubin Mehta, uh, we recorded it also with Papano and... Um, Santa Cecilia Orchestra, and every orchestra asks for Mendelssohn, so it's never routine. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry, but I haven't played this piece uh, a long time, so uh, have some mercy oh. on me. So, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly a piece that you can't practice, right? So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm like just trying to get through it. I've been 
Yeah, I mean, let's see. I'm, I'm excited. Let's improvise. Okay, I look forward. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Brad. Okay.
Bravo. Bravo, Brett. Oh, <laughs> Fantastic. Great, 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 great. Really wonderful. Uh, I enjoyed very much listening to you. This is a fantastic piece that was written and dedicated to a great violinist, uh, Romanian, uh, fantastic personality, Giorgio Enescu. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, just for our listeners, his eye dedicated each of the sonata, each of six sonata, to different uh, violin player that he was friends with. And um, in particular, this one, uh, the number three, Ballad, became so famous for its form because it's one movement in two different parts. Uh, but it has real this uh, spirit of uh, Enescu. And Enescu, for me at least, you know, he's uh, uh, my greatest idol. He was an amazing composer that composed uh, a number of symphonies and uh, in an opera, Oedipus. Uh, uh, then uh, his versatility was uh, phenomenal. He was a uh, teacher that produced at least a dozen of stars, including the famous Menuhin, Ida Handel, and uh, gave lessons to Gitlis. So, I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to understand the level at which he was operating. And I just for, forgot to tell you that he was nominated for the post of, uh, to be chief conductor of New York Philharmonic. Wow. This is the fact that uh, not many people know. So you can imagine the joy that uh, Isai had speaking to him uh, and the level yeah. of the musicianship. Uh, and for us, for a younger generation, <laughs> I consider myself also young. You know, it's always, there's always <laughs> some, <laughs> something to strive for. Yeah? So never-ending journey. Is Isai was also himself a... Uh, great conductor. That's why um, Enescu and Isai and all this uh, uh, great generation of violinists, they've been an uh, uh, amazing source of inspiration to me. That's why I took up the conducting. I was curious always about writing cadenzas. Um, composing, this is my distant dream. I still hope I'll be able to accomplish it one day. But there is never-ending uh, journey in music. This sonata, really, you can view it uh, from different perspectives, as I see it, uh, as a great solo piece that you can uh, uh, play quasi-cadenza. You can view it as also chamber music because the, uh, the multi-layered uh, structure of the chords and harmonies, you can easily uh, create dialogues and even trios, you know, when you play... Uh, triple stops and so uh, sometimes even four notes at the same time. It's actually amazing the Isai, the possibilities he has um, discovered with the violin. And you know, if we go back to all the great generation of the violinists, each of them had their own distinct style. Uh, Chrysler, uh, had a totally different image of the violin. Yeah, this is a different yes. planet. <laughs> yeah, Isai, then uh, Enescu, uh, Thibault. Uh, and then, you know, of course, you know, Michaelman, that he had his own signature, a sound that one couldn't yeah. ever uh, misinterpret. You know, it was always recognizable. So they were very famous for their own quality of sound. And when we listen back to the recordings, we immediately recognize, oh, this is Isai. You know, this is Enesco when he plays the beginning of the Chausson poem, no? unforgettable. I'd like you also to think sometimes orchestrally. Imagine the orchestra, and you will already start playing different. This triple stops in the end. They should really sound like an orchestra. Audience must be really dazzled by that, and then said, wow, this is not a violin. This is that possible that the violins can play that? No, it's an orchestra. The, or, there must be another guy playing backstage, helping him out. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the idea. Oh, okay. Okay. Also, the second layer of this, uh, uh, if we go deeper, it has um, uh, these qualities of... Um, it was written during the beautiful expressionism and impressionism in art. And I very much like to imagine... Uh, very often when I play this piece, especially the middle part, it's like an impressionistic painting, basically. So if uh, we are what we think about, and I had a great lesson uh, once with uh, 
uh, Rostropovich, who's my mentor, who told me, you know, whatever you imagine, that will always somehow translate into your playing. And okay. th that has always stuck in my mind. And uh, I played, I learned this piece for the first time when I was uh, uh, 12, 13 years old. Whoa. <laughs> then I played it all my life. Uh, and then, uh, as I told you before, you know, sometimes I laid down the pieces. Uh, I, I know them, I recognize them, but I don't touch them on purpose. So to stay fresh. And in fact, this ballad, I'm so glad you chose it because I haven't played it, you will not believe, maybe for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, I think I'm gonna, you know, take it again and start, you know, practicing after our lesson. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's look from right from the beginning. Uh, let's explore a little bit. The beginning has these dark qualities, uh, and I want you to. Pay attention to your vibrato. Sometimes non-vibrato is a great color as well. Don't okay. underestimate it. Okay? Sure. So please. Perfect. This is wonderful. Uh, Brett, uh, why don't we explore, uh, again, non-vibrato, yeah? And how actually we're going to color it, if we need to. It all depends where we play, in which acoustics we are. If we're in a big hall, uh, then probably we don't need as much vibrato as we are in a, a small room. I don't know. I think your room is a studio that is, uh, doesn't have big ceilings, probably, yeah? And doesn't yeah, have the, yeah. quite tight. So you need to still enhance uh, a little bit with the uh, left hand. Mm. What is important is your concentration for the beginning. You start and you draw the audience with you. And uh, okay. somebody that doesn't know this ballad, the meditation, musical meditation starts. And this is what okay. I'd like you to get. Explore as if you are reinventing the music. You've played it a number of times. You've pr practiced it 100 hours. I can see that. You've done fantastic jobs. Now, relax, let go, and just reinvent music as if you are Isai composing right now. Oh, okay. Much better. Uh, little tips uh, here and there. Um, sometimes we are, most of the times, we are our own enemies, as we know. And here, we mean one phrase, but actually our hands let us down. So, when you connect down and up bow, make sure it's the same uh, speed of the bow. Let's uh, analyze the vibrato, yeah? You start with vibrating, then you stop. Mm -hmm. See, it's random. It's beyond your control. I want you to be in control. If you stop it, rather you stop it for a reason. And why? It because you feel so. Because it's in favor of music. For instance, you know there are many ways how to play it. Yeah, non vibrato to start with. Mm -hmm. with yeah but you can also create different colorings yeah mm -hmm. 
And you go step by step, as if you're climbing the ladder. Climbing, there's something very, you know, a challenge, a challenge for you. And you think about it, you visualize the ladder and you actually go step by step, all right? Okay. Yes, I know, I know there is no diminuendo, yeah, here. It, it's for the, and you can do that. But for me, I have this image is that it comes from nothing and then it goes to nothing. So this is just an idea. Next phrase, you start speaking, don't play. Music is just to express your feelings or words. Here, music without words. So, as if you're speaking to someone, or it's a monologue. Mm. You're in a dark tunnel. You're in a very dark room and you don't know the answers. Finally, you say, okay, I shall try again. Mm. You try harder. And this time you don't make diminuendo. And that's why this phrase is different. Uh, uh. See? So that's why I prefer to make diminuendo in the first phrase. That's true. And it has really this dramatic feeling. Yeah. Okay? Okay. So, let's try. Brett, just one suggestion, you know, if you start from the string, the sound can be choked, look. You have to always remind yourself that the, the hairs of the bow, they have this, you know, kind of teeth. And if you go slowly, uh, it starts like this. So, it's better to start always with movement. And to make it easier on you, breathing is important. Look, I breathe in, and I start playing. You see, diaphragm is up, you're not relaxed. What you do? Breathe in, you breathe out. Start playing. Let's start the, the uh, second line. Frog. Do you really need to start in the frog here, pianissimo? So you see, okay. if you start to hear, as we know, the frog is very heavy, so perhaps you don't need so much bow. And vibrato could be different than in the beginning, right? So it's more like praying, more like even crying. And this la second note is unanswered question. The pose is not to stop but to breathe. Just stop the bow. And strive for the Chiriloro Chiriloro. You know, these poses are not because you want to stop, but because you have to, as if you have no, not enough air. You know, you're like swimming, uh, scuba diving, you know. 
It's very important breathing here. Like, and always think about longer phrases. Otherwise, this piece easily can be, you know, chopped into uh, different elements, and then it somehow won't make sense. When you play lower notes, already think about the upper notes. And also when you go back, all the intervals must be thought after, not just literally played. Otherwise, they mean nothing. Yeah, you see, Brett, this is a psychological, but it's a very important, yeah? So you go improvise and as if you are in a labyrinth and you don't know where to go. Where do I go? Where is the exit? You become desperate at some point. You are losing hope. And after okay. losing hope, oh, I've got an idea. Hmm. Finally, you found your way out. I see the light in the end of the dark tunnel. So, something like this, yeah? So, yeah. imagery, images are very important here. All right? So, last time and we go on. Fantastic. Great. Next phrase. You got out of the dark tunnel. Finally, you start leaving and breathing. The life is so amazing. And so on. And you start. The life starts. Huh? So... Now, this, this one, this one, uh, you are starting building something. Let's assume this is the, your home, yeah? First floor. Second floor. The third floor. And the fourth floor. So, you're starting building something. Let's try. Exactly, yeah. And every time you use different vibrato, different pressure into the string, and different speed of the bow to make these dif uh, differences very evident for us, yeah? So whatever may seem to you evident may not for the audience, so you have to sometimes exaggerate. So sure. do not use the, for the first time, uh, too much bow. Don't rush, don't rush. First step. Second step, I use uh, more bow. Get to the top when you get to Everest. Celebrate. And as if you know you're skiing. Slow in the beginning and then full speed. But the secret is that you connect all the notes. Then it creates the density. And then 
you know, from there, you can make the rubato. But this instant connection to music is what ultimately is important. Lovely. Little detail here. The first and second note was perfect, yeah? But then... Um, the coordination between the right hand that has to uh, as you know Brad, you know there are four positions of the elbow g d a e and in between when you play du double stops yeah so uh, the elbow has to anticipate if it doesn't then you create an accent you know? there are exceptions uh, There are exceptions when you don't connect them perfectly. Mm -hmm. no. Otherwise, it uh, has to be uh, smooth. Yeah, elbow always anticipates. Fantastic. And now you are entering uh, a different space. And the energy has to be really wide open. So be really relaxed. You know, yeah. Stop the bow. Don't stop the movement. Yeah. Start from the top. And every note. As if you're trying to get uh, hold on to something, but then you're forced to go down, right? So, okay. and don't rush. Bread, bread, one line, one line. Think always long term. See, there are a lot of details that you have to get along the way. You have to work on them. But then, after all, it's music and it's the, your vision of the phrase. Phrasing is the key. So, here. So, don't get stuck, you know. This again, okay. re reminder. This piece. Why is that is so is so difficult? Because he gives you the structure and sort of a freedom to do anything, improvise. Yet the musician has to create a vision of the phrasing and connect music between the notes and create a beautiful phrasing. Let's go from um, uh, a tempo. Yara, lararam. Lovely. Good, 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 good. Uh, Brett, do you remember when we all were much younger, we practiced the finale of the Sibelius Violin Concerto and how painful that was? I remember I practiced this 
thousand hours and still didn't get it. <laughs> now, when I finally understood that it's about the impulse and relaxation, then... Mm. Accents, yeah, they have to be really like by you know, uh, boxing match. You know, re really, this is this is the image for me. You know, I always come back to that. No, no, wa ba 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 ba. Okay, let's go. First of all, let's let's um, let's practice that. Yeah. So the right hand goes to the position of the D and A. Yeah? You're a little too late on the preparation. See, my elbow goes straight there to the position. It relaxes, then then index finger is making the point. Pa ba pa ba, and immediately relaxes. Pa ba pa, pi pi pa. The the idea is after that impulse to relax. Right, and now you create longer phrase and the vision. Uh. Yes, yes, also here. The, the challenge here is that you have to make an accent and then go back with the speed of the bow, yet keeping the vibrato electrifying. Mm -hmm. And as you progress with vibrato, you also give uh, extra uh, like a tsunami, <laughs> if you want. And if you, haven't, uh, and if you haven't broken a couple of hairs, it means uh, it's unsuccessful performance here. <laughs> because the yeah. attack on the string has to be really precise and like, like razor sharp, you see? I play for you uh, with uh, how you play with vibrato. Pay attention. It's all good, but it has no progression. Yeah. It starts non vibrato almost and then explodes in electrifying madness okay. and every time more. So he gives you another chance always. Yada, ta da, I am. Ah, I can do it better. Yada, tiri. Yum! Finally, you feel liberated and you celebrate in singing and lyricism here. You have only one bar to celebrate, so take it, don't waste it, don't rush it. And then again, yum! Every time, more and more. Okay. Excellent. For the better quality of the sound, always control the landing into the string with the pinky finger here. Mm. Soft, yeah? Yes, exactly, exactly. You see, our fingers here, fingers of the right hand is like a, has to be like a limo, the greatest, you know, Rolls Royce here. 
Yes, exactly. You have to have that feeling that everything breathes, all the joints, all the little joints, phalangeal joints here, the wrist, elbow, finally the whole, you know, the whole arm. Once more. Tira y yarada. Don't rush. Connect. Music between notes. Literally, you see? Also this modulation. Eh? different melody starts. Mm -hmm. Don't rush, don't rush. Don't rush here. Yeah. Like, mm. Change the color here. The Again, you see longer vision phrase, yeah? This, bra bravo, bravo. Here, this is like two spiders going one away from the other. You see, one goes down, another one goes up. This chamber music, right? So... Um... Beautiful. Uh, Brett, I'm sure you can do it now. Uh, much better. If you pay attention that near the frog, you connect beautifully with the same speed and don't rush. Don't tense up your elbow here. And breathe, breathe. How to practice this? It's very important that you extend always the last notes on the legato. See? Mm -hmm. So you have the leverage then when you're playing in the a normal tempo, then all the last notes of the bow, they're sung and properly voiced. Okay. Lovely, lovely. Don't forget about the vibrato also. In, uh, what is important always is the last notes, because last notes can be very often sadly abandoned. Okay? <clears throat> so that's why when you practice, vibrate them um, more intensely, but relaxed. And also try to, um, you know, even though th these are the double stops, try to vibrate with the phalangeal joint and not with the whole hand, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Lovely, and in the end, the right hand, relaxed, relaxed, you know? 
There are not a lot of places here where you can uh, have the uh, show the cantabile, but this is the place. Use it. Lovely, lovely. We can make it perfect on this example here, and then uh, this practice will be valid for the rest of the ballad for you. Mm, so, mm, mm. same speed of the bow in the right hand, then very smooth connection left hand. Mm. Same vibrato, yeah. So when you come to the uh, normal tempo, it creates illusion that two instruments are playing and not one. Right? Yeah, little secret for you here. You have to be really like a spider, Spider-Man. Yeah. So you have to bend your phalangeal joint in order to, uh, to make the smooth change. Right, right. That's why, again, I repeat, phalangeal joints are always important because they are creating the energy. Uh -huh. And they are singing, right? So the energy is right here. All right? Beautiful. Beautiful, yes. Much better. Continue. Lovely, lovely. Let's go on. Much better. You see, you, you feel better now, all right? Yeah. Okay, continue. You, you don't have a, a other appointment to see your uh, parents or anyone, girlfriend, no? No, no. <laughs> Fine, <laughs> good. <laughs> You're okay, too. <laughs> continue then. <laughs> Fantastic. Great. Well done. Well done. Now, uh, the flatander in the right hand is, is beautiful, but you can give it more twist to change the okay. speed of the bow according to the colors that you want to create. Right? Again, th for me, this is um, an uh, impressionistic painting where every harmony you take and you, like uh, Akin, the a painter takes, dips his brush into the paint and starts painting. And then another color. And, I, and this palette of colors you have to envision. And this is what virtuosity is. Not that, you know, mm -hmm. you'll play fast or not, you know. Uh, people misinterpret sometimes that virtuosity and most difficult is when you have to play fast. But 
the virtuosity, as you know, uh, it is when you can create as much emotions uh, and, you know, and connect the notes in different ways, that every note is, has life of its own, but yet it is connected, like a chain of uh, life. If you believe in reincarnation, <laughs> this is like this. So this okay. is the place for you to show that. Uh, on the practical point, <laughs> left hand has to be here. There are two ways how you can play it. You can play like you did. And uh, but there is no uh, precision here. So left hand has to be really like a typewriting machine. Um, This is what it is. This is these are the qualities yeah. that in. And the right hand is to totally the opposite. All right? Shall we yeah. try that? Beautiful, Brett. Uh, don't rush. It is dolce, so uh, a vibrato will be would be really welcomed, in, especially in yeah. the beginning. Also, there, there, there is a lot of pain, if you can uh, detect that. Uh, Here, as if the sun is rising, here, yeah, the... <clears throat> all right, and try to improvise as if you have never played it before, like I did. You know, I I, I didn't practice it for a long time, but you know, just remember, <laughs> <laughs> just remembering the notes. <laughs> Bravo, bravo. This is a uh, quite a complex place, yeah? But you did it great. You nailed it. Now, what would help you really is this image of, at least for me, this is the place when I can envision the, you know, Edward Munch, the scream painting. Oh, yeah. So, here is the expressionism. Here it comes to help you. And, you know, if you imagine that, then the... It'll be not just notes, it'll be message that you're passing on. And everyone then already can imagine something else in the, in the audiences, yeah? Yeah. All right? so, but this is something really dramatic. And as uh, uh, Munch was saying, uh, was saying about this painting, you know, there was this uh, uh, sunset and the sky was reddish and I heard the scream and although there was no one. So this is what it is. Is the illusion, yeah. All right. So, uh, can we go from the? Sure.
Yes, nice, 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 nice. Now imagine the uh, human being, you know, our uh, natural temperature, uh, I mean, centigrade, yeah? I'm, I'm from Europe, uh, from Russia. So 36 and 6, right? So uh, the beginning is here. Thirty-seven and a half and thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-two. Eh? Scream. That's what it is. <laughs> okay. Let's let's try and build it. Yes, breath. Very good, very good. Don't rush. <laughs> and this is like a after earthquake. It's like a aftermath. Huh? Different painting here and so on. Okay, can we nail this? Yeah, chi da 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 da. Yeah, yeah, much better. Now, uh, let's cool down. <laughs> and how we do it? First of all, vibrate with the phalangeal joint here, and then connect with the little fingers here using the pinky. Very little movement, you see? All right. Secrets just between you and myself, all right? Okay. <laughs> and with the rest of the world, all right? Yeah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And that's how you practice extending the second note on the legato, all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? All right. Yeah. So, next section. This is one of the most amazing sections, you know, of the graziosa here. So, as I said, another color, another painting. There is a density and there is also smoothness. Like, you know, you open the windows and in the afternoon, uh, like music of Debussy in a way, yeah? Let's try this. Yeah, change the color here. Change the color here, very important, yeah? So, uh, here. Um, I want you to think harmonically, yeah? As if you don't play the violin, but you play the organ. Um, change the color here. Um, A little bit of, of Bach. Huh? As if the monster comes out, you know? All right. I'm starting to practice this with you now. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so good already. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Need an hour. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, 
Don't, don't push, don't push, don't push, don't push. Connect with the string in the frog using pinky. Look. Then your elbow anticipates always next string. Bravo! Fantastic! Fantastic! Then let's build another. Yeah. Every bow, more and more uh, speed of the bow. Breath, 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 breath. Nobody expects that. The major, a celebration. So use strategically less amount of bow for the minor and then hugely improve on the, on the speed of the bow uh, on the chi lam pa ba. Yeah, shall we try that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, nice. Uh, now let's try again climbing. Again, this top mountain. Every time more and more bow and more intensity. Take the time, man. Eh? That's why my speakers broke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even here, the, the three steps. Eh? You see, so different speed, eh? you know, few centimeters, then more. Full bar. And in the fast tempo. Eh? Save yourself. Everyone thinking, okay, is he all right? Is he tired? Here, uh, it's written Ben Marcato, yeah? So either you play... Uh... Or... 
So you, yeah. you can you can change according to the mood, you know. It's also impressive, you know, to do that. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, even here, I know it's tempting to play really fast this right away, but think harmonically. Enough of that, yeah? But think yeah. harmonically, right? Okay. Yum, pop, pop, pop. From here. Huh? Yeah. You can do that now. Uh, much better. Now, use your fingers of the right hand. Very important. Otherwise, you'll have less sound, surprisingly, right? Uh... Fantastic. That was fun. <laughs> Great. What a marvelous piece that is, right? Yeah, wow. It's been so long since I've actually performed being on YouTube. Well, you inspire like... me, you know, to practice it some more, you know, and then <laughs> really? perform <Wow>. it. <laughs> Lovely. Thank yeah, you I very love much. your recording online too, as well. Oh, yes, um, yeah, yeah. On YouTube for Sibelius. Yeah, but that, I I was 22 or 23. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thank you very much, Brett. Enjoy yourself. Thank I'm you, Brett. To some, sometimes meeting you soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank bye, you very bye much. Bye now. Thank you. I expected to be inspired and achieving basically Better, uh, becoming a better musician. Fantastic. All right. It's great. It's great communication. Uh, the feedback was brilliant. Yeah, just totally inspired now. So. More people listening to it. More people learning about it, actually. So, and taking it through kind of their whole life, you know. Doesn't matter what walks of life they have, they're still quite involved in classical music. That's what I would wish for.